OpenAI pulled off some impressive reaction times at the International. To a certain extent it even seemed quite unfair and I'm going to be explaining why it's unfair and I'll also have proven ways that you can improve your reaction time which I happen to be researching over the past few months and this tends to be a good time to bring this up. One of the plays you would have seen in game 1 happen quite regularly was Axe would blink call in and he would get Ewels and this happened almost always because of the fact that Berserker's call has a 400 milliseconds delay yet OpenAI works off of a 200 milliseconds delay. Now this seems quite unfair because you know as a human you've never seen really someone do that very as quick before or even gets the full animation finished. It's usually after the animation. Now the thing is is that 200 milliseconds is intense Ended to replicate human reaction time but it ends up being quite quicker the human reaction time is about 240 to 250 milliseconds but that's just clicking a button and something changing on the screen it's not necessarily taking processing the, all the information on the screen and then turning out the desired output now I've found ways of which I can improve my reaction time down to under 190 milliseconds and as low as about 180 milliseconds on average now the Formula 1 drivers also train their reaction times quite regularly and what they focus very heavily on is getting good consistent times and getting them low and they tend to be around 200 milliseconds. However, the reaction times that the Formula 1 drivers use ends up being quite different. They have to move their hand completely whereas all I have to do is just press a button and there's a even hardware delays that can go into this. So we're going to look at reaction times and how they work as a whole. So first off you have to have a sense that is stimulated. In this case we're just going to be looking at eyes and you're being stimulated by something visual and then you have to process that information and take an action. So in the case of this website which I'll link down in the description is that you're using your eyes for visual stimulus and then the changing of the color is the processing of the information and then you're pressing the mouse button and that's it it's very very simple which is a little bit more when you take into account what's happening in a video game one of the long cast time ultimates in Dota is Doom's ultimate and it can be even quite hard to dodge it even though it has 500 milliseconds cast time. The processing time for this can be much shorter if you anticipate what's going to change on your screen next. So the more things you predict ahead of time will give you the upper hand. However, in the case of OpenAI, they can see every like prediction and can look at more predictions than a human can. So that's again another place of where OpenAI has a slight upper hand with it. Now in other games, you have audio. Now audio isn't as important in Dota because of the camera angle. If you take a first person shooter game you need to be able to hear the sounds around you because you can't look at everything on the screen at once and there could be gunfire happening behind you and you need to turn around and look at it. But again this is also taking into account that there's inconsistencies on how you react. That if there's a very subtle change visually or even the audio might have a slight delay on where the action is or it might be hard to distinguish the difference of an audio clip over another one. This ends up being up where the stimulation can have inconsistencies based on your processing of the initial stimulation. Now measuring the exact delay of this anticipation that human players have is very hard to understand and it can be even as far as 250 milliseconds and sometimes just 50 milliseconds. It can sometimes be very small but what OpenAI should be using is a random variable on top of their reaction time so that they essentially get like plus or minus 50 reaction time on top of what their base reaction time is. Now the humans even have a greater disadvantage in this case as well when it comes to hardware. So if you're using a mouse that's a really cheap one or a wireless mouse you're going to get around 8 to 16 milliseconds extra delay on this however if you're using a wired gaming mouse you're going to get around one or two milliseconds delay now that one or two milliseconds is not very much but if you're using a cheap mouse 16 milliseconds is a whole frame if you're using a trackpad or mobile just don't even bother because they use these gestures, you know, like for expanding or zooming in, uh, like scrolling and stuff like that. And all of these things end up adding an extra 300 milliseconds to light. And in some cases, even up to 450 milliseconds. So if you are doing these reaction times online, don't use a trackpad and don't use your mobile phone. And any sort of app that tries to check your reaction time is probably not going to work perfectly either because of these gestures if it's enabled on your phone. 
Now these hardware delays are quite minor and another one that is also quite minor is your screen's refresh rate. So most people use a 60 hertz monitor which is 15 milliseconds per frame and it won't really make much difference if you go up to like 120 hertz monitor. Your eyes really don't benefit that much more with reaction time based off of that and even 8 milliseconds isn't an enormous amount. So I'm not going to say that using a wireless mouse is even going to put that much negative effect on you but just know that it exists if you are measuring your own times now the bigger effects that are going to make a difference is your ping however at the international players are playing on close to zero millisecond ping now most players end up playing about a 50 to 100 millisecond ping so if you are designing a game and that you need like a cast animation beforehand do take this into account as well on top of the base human reaction time now there's one other aspect that doesn't really affect most multiplayer games but can affect a lot of single player games and it's a thing called a double buffer and the idea is, is that you start rendering the next frame before you finish the current frame and this is something that's built into engines and it makes you get like higher FPS better performance and there's even a thing of triple buffers of where you render two frames ahead however the problem with these buffers is that they also affect your input so everything is delayed by an extra frame that than it normally would so you, with a double buffer you can have a maximum of 30 milliseconds this is assuming that you're running at 60 fps so 30 milliseconds delayed isn't that bad and most people don't notice it and even 45 milliseconds with a triple buffer a lot of people don't end up even noticing it until they're told and the fact is is that it's similar to kind of playing a game online because if you're playing 50 millisecond or 100 millisecond ping that's similar to playing a single player game with this delay and one of the games that ended up using a triple buffer was The Last of Us Remastered on the PlayStation 4. Now there's also another edge case to this uh, like reaction times as a whole and it's where you can anticipate something that's going to happen in the future by seeing the visual effects of it in front of you. One of the effects in Dota you end up seeing is that someone yields and then you can stun them or use a spell straight afterwards very commonly using lean as Ewells and then stun straight after it. So now you're probably wondering how can you improve your reaction times and do pro players have some insane reaction times? Well not really because the fact is is that better decision making and better execution is going to benefit you more than faster reaction times and that when I started out I had around 230 milliseconds I looked up online and a lot of even CSGO players did this reaction time test and only got like about 220 milliseconds it just shows that kind of that playing games regularly every day doesn't necessarily benefit you with enormously more but if you train directly your reaction times I did find benefits in my mechanical skills and game that I could rely a lot more on my reaction times up where I could wait for the enemy to use a spell and then I could just blink away and I could li literally just bait them out and making them waste ultimates on purpose and it's an interesting thing up where when you improve the consistency of your reaction time it ends up being very beneficial to you and it's not just a good mechanical skill to have for the game that you're playing now but it's transferable from game to game which is very useful. I'm going to show you a few different methods to improve your reaction times. Now the first and best one is to go onto this human benchmarking test and practice it every day and do 25 attempts and get your average of that and save it into a spreadsheet and now do that every day and make sure it's 25 not 5 5 is useless right you need to improve your averages and it's consistently over time it's a very dull and boring task but it works very well and it's probably the best way of improving it now the second thing that will also benefit you in this like uh, training of like practicing your reaction time is using your peripheral vision which is a little bit out further than your like center vision if you want to put it that way but the idea is is that the peripheral vision area you have faster reaction time slightly quicker and this just happens to be one of the reasons that CSGO players sit really close to their screen and this is not necessarily good for your eyes and I don't recommend doing it but the thing is is that they found something that allowed them to react quicker but they didn't necessarily know why but it's because of the peripheral vision now the other thing that will affect your reaction times with this human benchmarking test is turn off Windows arrow so this is a thing that you have to go into your Windows settings and turn it off and pretty much it creates like a delay of about 20 30 milliseconds on top of your current reaction time but this is a 
proven way to improve your reaction time and anyone can improve their reaction time if you put your mind to it. So I hope you enjoyed this video, make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification button.